Welcome. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little video. Uh, I'm going to answer some questions that's going to kind of give you a little bit more perspective about who I am and what I kind of believe in. So I was given these questions to answer and what I'm going to do is I'll make a video on it so you can kind of learn a little bit more about me and why I kind of make the videos that I do and what I like to do outside of making math videos. So I'm going to answer 18 questions and hopefully you can just uh, listen in and enjoy. So the first question I said is, if I weren't talking to you right now, what would I be doing? And more than likely what I'd be doing after I work as a real estate agent, so I'd more than likely be probably trying to sell some real estate, working with some buyers and some sellers. And outside of real estate, I probably would either be practicing rugby or I would uh, be cooking. I really, really enjoy cooking. I love uh, cooking dinner um, every night and I enjoy just different types of cuisine and being creative with meals and that's really enjoyable for me. It's a way for me to kind of relax and not have to go through all the commotion of being in a classroom and also you know run around as a as a realtor. So the next question comes in, I am a teacher because, well I'm a teacher really because I want to give back. Um, I've had a lot of great teachers in my life and I want to kind of give back to that community and when I was kind of sitting in a high school classroom I had the realization that I wanted to be a high school teacher. Um, I wanted to do what they did. I want to have the power to have an impact on individuals like I've, um, like I've had an impact from other teachers. The next question is my adventure in YouTube started because. My adventure in YouTube started, be, um, started actually a couple years back. I was at a real estate conference where we were talking about how to use video in your real estate career. And I was sitting there and you know, still a math teacher and thinking about, you know, I really want to improve that with my real estate, but I'm like, why am I not using that in my classroom? Why am I not recording what I do in my classroom so therefore my students can go home and watch those videos? So this was before a lot of the hype of flipping the classroom and all that kind of thing. And so it really became my idea. So I immediately went on to YouTube, tried to see if there was any other teachers, and there was only a couple that were really doing it. And I saw that's a great idea for me to bring video into the classroom so my students and others eventually can actually gain access to math education. So I love students that try. And I think that's one of the first steps that all students have to do is just kind of make that first step, right? You can never accept to obtain something if you don't take that first step to try it. So whenever we're working with problems, we're trying to learn new information, I love students that are kind of willing to step out of the box, maybe go up to the board and say, hey, you know what, let me try this problem. Let me see if I can get this right or wrong. Let me try to ask some questions. Students that are willing to try are always going to be students that teachers really enjoy being around because it helps them grow as a teacher and the students grow as well. I hate students who, I don't really have a creative answer for this, uh, that's the next question. I was trying to think, obviously as a teacher, I don't hate any of my students, or I don't hate really any kind of qualities, that's a really strong word. But I was trying to think of something that maybe I dislike um, about a, you know students, or maybe something that I would like to maybe change. And the best thing I could probably say is, I don't really hate students, but as far as students that don't have any belief in themselves, that they can actually do what we do in their class, that would be the thing I'd like to change the most about them. Because, And I try to get that with students, is give them a positive influence and in saying, you can do this. We can work together to achieve whatever you want to achieve in my class and then to move on to the next level or whatever else you want in your life. So I wouldn't really say hating students that don't believe in themselves, but you know, working with students that don't believe in themselves would maybe be my... Um, biggest dilemma that I, I have. The next thing is my favorite song. Uh, when I was in college, I don't know why I came up on this thing, but I used to always listen to No Women No Cry by uh, Bob Marley. I love the song. It's a very mellowing tune and it just kind of, you know, it's one of those where I like to sit down and just listen to it and it's a great song. So make sure you uh, put that on your playlist and listen to it a couple times. It's awesome. My favorite meal is a gyro with fries. I'm from, uh, from Michigan and going down to uh, uh, Greek Town in Detroit. I love it. I love just going to all the Coney Islands in, uh, in the Michigan area and just having a no lovely gyro, slicing it up and then putting on uh, some pita with some french fries. It's just tzatziki sauce. Uh, it's just amazing. So that's my favorite uh, meal that I would always like to have. I enjoy playing rugby. That is kind of my way outside of school that it kind of gets my little aggression out, kind of gets me moving again. I played sports throughout my life, uh, wrestling, football, and baseball when I was younger in high school, and I never really kind of 
kept up with my sports. But then once in college and outside of college, I found the game of rugby, and it's a game that I absolutely love. So I really encourage you, if you've never heard of rugby or never really played it, to give it a shot or to go and look it up on YouTube. It really is a great sport. The last time I cried was actually not too long ago. I know, I know, I'm, uh, I try to stay uh, pretty strong. But last time I cried was actually when I was in church. And I was just, uh, you know, giving thanks and just kind of thinking about all the things that I've been blessed for in my life. And it just really kind of hit a chord with me. I, I don't know what I got to say, you know, I'll get a little sappy for you. But um, it was just an overwhelming feeling. And, you know, I was just thanking um, God for everything that I've really received in my life and, you know, for everything that I have. And it just kind of overwhelmed me. And, you know, a little, little tear came down from my eye, I will admit. So I'm being honest and just trying to open up for you. A uh, phrase I use way too often, I would definitely say is, here's how you do it, and welcome. I think all my videos, I always try to say, you know, welcome. Or, you know, a lot of times I'll say, okay, well, here's how you do it, or this is what we're going to do. Um, I use that a lot um, sometimes when, uh, when I'm speaking or maybe a little nervous on the video. I'll sometimes always uh, bring those in, even though they're not phrases, but I use them a lot. I wish people would take more notice. I was trying to think of this and I'm like, man, I don't know what people take more notice of. But I did kind of think about, you know, I am a pretty reserved person, even with my friends and my family. So I maybe take maybe a little bit more, maybe more notice of, you know, who I am, my feelings, my thoughts a lot of times because I, I really don't express that a lot of, out of the times. So I was thinking about, you know, if people could maybe take more notice than that, maybe that would be something I guess I could add in there. I don't know. I don't really have a good answer for that. The most surprising thing that happened to me... Um, was I think coming to the realization, I don't really have any great story for this one either, so sorry about that. But I think the most surprising thing that happened to me was coming to the realization that really I am my own destiny. I can change whatever I want to in my life. I'm a big proponent of you know self-development and I love reading on books of how to improve yourself and making really the most out of your life. And I wouldn't really say it's a surprising aspect, but it was kind of to me, but a lot of the books and they talk about, you know, is controlling your destiny and your thoughts and, dri and driving that towards what you really want to achieve in your life. And when you have that understanding of, you know, you really can do whatever you want to, whatever you put your mind to and your effort and everything you want to do, you really can go for and achieve what you want to do. So I look back at my life and things, why I achieved things and how I did them. And I really noticed that I am the controller of everything that I really want to do. So really having that ball in your court is just an amazing, powerful feeling that is really cool to understand that you can really do what you want. You can control where you want to go no matter where you start and no matter what comes in your way, you have a choice on how you're going to react. So that was a surprising thing because I didn't know that for my whole life. I, it took me about 20, 25, 28 years to really come to that realization of, hey, you can do whatever you want. You decide. Uh, a common mis misperception of me is definitely that I'm a math genius. Students look at me, a lot of times even I get comments online, people are like, man, you are awesome at math, you, you understand everything, you know, or, oh, you're a math teacher, you must be amazing at math, right? You can multiply this and this. I've worked very, very hard for my degree, and it did not always come easy to me. I struggled a lot when I was in high school. Uh, even in middle school, I struggled a lot with math. In college, I worked my butt off to really get to where I've been. And if you look to some of my videos, a lot of times I'll even make little mistakes up there on the board and or maybe get stopped and get confused and be like, what, am, what was I talking about or where did I go and, and what am I trying to achieve? So math doesn't naturally come very, very easily to me. It's something that I've worked very hard to be. And that was one of the reasons, again, to be a teacher was because I, I, I have a perspective of somebody that struggled with math. So I wanted to help students because it always seems like the teacher math just comes so easy to them and they get it like this. And a lot of times when I understand something, I explain something like that and it's good for me to kind of step back and say, look into those students' uh, minds. What are they thinking right now? And try to think back when you were in school and how can you best maybe relay that information again or re-say what you're explaining to give to help them out. I am good at, I can't remember the, oh, empathy. I think uh, working with students and my family, I really have a good understanding of how people um, are feeling and when they go through certain situations, uh, you know, where they're at at that certain point. I think, um, I think I can relate to people very, very well. That's something that I think really helps me in 
the field of education and also helps me as a realtor that I can relate to people, I know where they're coming from, I know their circumstances, and I can kind of use that to my advantage. I am very bad at organization. I work very hard. I kind of like actually, no, there. I kind of like how that's color coordinated in the back. It kind of makes me look like I'm organized. But I really got to work every day to be organized. If I don't, I quickly, everything spirals out of control. So you can see in behind, I have a calendar for all of my classes. I make sure I say, all right, this is what, this is like an overview map of everything I'm doing, when we're gonna take our test and so forth. Everything for real estate, I gotta mark down what I'm going to do, how many calls I'm gonna make, when I'm gonna set up appointments. I have a calendar on my phone that I use. I have to be very, very organized. And I was never like this in high school or in college. I would not very rarely write down when I was taking a test or anything like that. And it really, really didn't come to me how being unorganized was hurting me until I tried running my own real estate investment company. And I realized that I, you can't do this when you're just so unorganized. So I work very hard a lot of times. And even some would say, hey, you still got some work done on organization. And I know it's it's tough. It's something you got to be disciplined and working on yourself to be organized. But that's one mission that I always want to keep on improving upon. And, you know, it's something I'm constantly working at. In moments of weakness, I always like to strive to be the leader. That's something that I've always seen myself as a leader. I've always seen myself to be able to strive to be the best when I've looked upon as a leader. And so in moments of weakness, I always try to stand up tall and uh, forge, forge ahead, shoulders straight, going with it. In a true life, I would be a construction worker. Uh, when I was in high school and college, I worked for a construction firm in excavating. I ran heavy machinery. I also worked as a laborer, actually, for probably more of those years. But I got dirty and, you know, loved driving big equipment, getting oil and dirt on me. And it was lovely. I actually, I almost wanted to decide just to keep stay in the construction business and just you know operate equipment because it's something i love i i love that interaction with the people and then also the the feeling of creating something from nothing you know you look at where buildings and all the pipes and everything that goes under them and all the excavating that has to happen it's amazing to have that sense of accomplishment of like you are a part of that you did all of that and also it's really cool to operate those heavy machinery because you can do a lot of damage with that stuff in a nutshell, my philosophy is to improve every day. If you're not doing something to improve yourself, you're getting yourself weaker. And so every day you got to be doing some little steps. You can't go, you can't reach for a goal and just try to jump, get on top of the mountain. You just got to take one step at a time, little steps improving yourself. Otherwise, you're just moving back forwards. And the last thing, when life all comes to an end, the only thing we're going to have is what's in our brain, those memories. So, you know, whenever you have an opportunity to make a memory, even though how silly and out of the box it may seem, make that memory because there's nothing more that I love to be sitting driving in a car, thinking about something and it just come to an utter laughter. Even when I'm around people, I'll just start laughing. They're like, what are you laughing about? And just some funny memory will come back to me and it'll crack me up. So I'm always looking forward to making good memories out of any situation that I'm in and always improve my life. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is a quick little monologue of of about me by answering 18 questions. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to uh, comment down below. And I look forward to making some more math videos for you throughout the year. Thanks.